Hey, welcome to the Woods fans. It's Melissa Woods. The next step in this lake house kitchen remodel is to actually remove the exterior door entrance in favor of a bigger kitchen. So I want to remove this entrance because it's confusing for the layout of the house. And on the exterior, it has these ugly cement steps and, and railing, and I'd rather it just be sided off. Removing this entrance will also force people to come in through the front door of the house, which I like, instead of the side entrance. Now where I am in Minnesota, right now it's 35 degrees the day I decided to do this, so I can't go full bore removing all of the siding, patching that, removing the steps and everything until the weather warms up more later in the spring. So in this video I'm going to be showing you how to close the exterior door and frame up an exterior wall from the inside. The first thing I did was remove the screen door and I just removed all the screws on the framing that held it into place. I've never done anything like this. So a lot of this project, it was just trial and error. And you can see here that I'm just sitting considering what's the next step because I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm going for it anyway. So the next thing I decided was to remove the brick mold. I didn't remove the extra exterior wood that was around the door frame because I think that will get done later when I patch the siding. On the inside, I also removed the trim. Now it's just the door and the jam connected together and my ideal is that I could remove them as one piece instead of taking off the door and then disassembling the jam. This is because, you know me, I always want to try and repurpose things so I actually sold this door after the fact for someone else to reuse. So I leaned some chairs up against the door because I could tell that it was a bit loose. There was just some nails through the jam holding it in that I couldn't get out. I figured if I pushed from the outside against it, eventually I could pop it out and it worked. Oh my goodness, the moment that that door popped out of its place was quite thrilling, not gonna lie. So I got that out of the way and now I'm gonna remove the sill, which was a block of wood that was not even really attached to the framing, but it was screwed down into the home's like plate that sits on the block foundation. So I was using a big wrecking bar and I looked down in there and realized there were some screws that I, I couldn't find. So then I was able to clean out the head and back them out with my drill. You can see that with that removed, I found some things down in the hole. There was like some random wood and then there was a lot of that great stuff foam that I had to clear out so that I could build new framing tight up against what was there. I also found that there were some nails sticking up that didn't have a head on them, so I had to cut them off with my angle grinder. Now to temporarily cover the hole in the side of the house, I'm cutting three quarter inch sheathing plywood just to screw into that spot, and it's not as snug of a fit as I'm going to be doing when the weather warms up and I actually replace the siding. So for now, this is just gonna have to do, but don't come at me because later on, you'll see in the clip that there's a little bit of like exterior sunlight coming through and that will be fixed in the future. Oh my gosh, three quarter inch plywood is heavy as indicated by my face. <laughs> but I got it into place and then I screwed it against the existing framing. Now let's build framing for the wall that I wanna put where the door once was. So using regular two by fours, that was the depth of my wall. If you live in an older home, it could even be a two by six depth, but you just buy what you need. I'm gonna be cutting these to the width of the opening, and then I'm gonna cut two longer pieces of two by fours to run as studs down the wall. Yes, I probably should have hooked up my miter saw to a shop vac, but then I wouldn't have this satisfying clip to share with you. Now with my area cleared, I'm gonna set together my framing with sinkers. These are framing nails, and I've learned that it's better to frame with nails than screws because they have a little more play with home settling, and they still hold strong, whereas screws can get brittle over time. Now I really wish I had a framing nailer, but I don't, and since this is a small framing job, I'm just doing it by hand. I was holding this in place by putting my feet down crossways across the studs and I'm measuring studs 16 inches on center. So as you can see when I'm lifting it into place, my stud is 16 inches from the left side of where the door was and then another 16 inches from that actually measures 16 inches from the corner of the wall. So it, the measurements worked out great. At first my framing was too big so I did go back, adjust, cut some things and then I got it snugly into place. 
To attach the framing I built to what was existing, I added more nails in both the top and bottom 2x4. So at this point in the process, I hired my electrician. He came and ran wires for me to get an outlet for the fridge in this corner of the kitchen. And now I can move forward with framing. So with the electrical done, I'm adding blocking. This is to support the edge of the drywall. I could have framed up with two by fours running vertically on both sides as well to attach to the existing framing, but I just wanted to save lumber and this is gonna work just fine. So I'm adding my blocking with big uh, 16 gauge nails and then I'm gonna be patching the floor. For some reason there was like this open area by the threshold of the door. So first I'm using my oscillating multi-tool to cut the opening evenly so that I can put a one by two fur strip of wood with Craig holes drilled in there so that I can drill my screws at this angle that connects it to the framing I added. This is a nice snug fit. And so now there's no airflow from the crawl space underneath the house here especially after I caulked all the seams. This video is sponsored by WorkPro Tools. Throughout this project, you'll see me use WorkPro Tools because of their ingenuity and power. My favorite has been the five-in-one workbench. You can adjust the height and transform it to do so many things. I've used it the most as a scaffolding to work more safely when renovating. The wheels and casters allow it to transform to a dolly or a creeper for mechanic work. I've used it this way as a rolling platform to move things around with ease. It can become a workbench top with storage for your tools and helpful measurements handy. Add the included rails and the workbench even becomes a sliding miter saw stand. And if you're wiser than me and have your miter saw hooked into a shop vac, there's a whole power strip right on the side. Check out WorkPro Tools by clicking on the link in the description of this video and for a limited time, get 15% off this versatile workbench with my discount code. Now let's get back to the wall. Because this is an exterior wall, I'm going to need to roll insulation. This is what I bought, it's R15, so it is insulated enough for an exterior space. And I'm gonna be cutting this with just a simple utility knife. I'm using my level as a straight edge and I have my mask on my goggles but I forgot my gloves and this was a mistake I was very itchy after doing this but besides that little hiccup this went pretty smoothly now uh, these rolls of insulation are sized perfectly for a 16 inch stud on center so because I had added blocking I'm doing this patch job I needed to cut out the insulation around where the blocks got added this was quite annoying I maybe would do this differently if I were to do it again, but my other alternative was to try to cut the edge of the drywall off to expose half of my stud. And I don't know, I just decided that was gonna be a crumbly, difficult mess. So I'd rather do this. When installing insulation, you could just push it up against things and be done with it, but I'm kind of a perfectionist and it's best to just really cut around any of your obstacles so that it doesn't compress the insulation and the insulation is allowed to expand and really do its job. So this includes cutting out around electrical boxes. And then also you can see here that I'm cutting a slit in the back for the electrical wire to go through and then the insulation goes behind the wire as well and that's ideal. The paper on this insulation has a flap on it that you can staple onto the stud. Some people staple it over the stud, but I stapled it next to the side of the stud just because that's what I found on YouTube said to do. And this paper is actually a vapor barrier, so you don't need to put another like plastic sheeting or vapor barrier over the insulation. You can just drywall at this point. To cut my drywall, again, I'm using my utility knife to score the back of the drywall, and then I hit the front to make it crease and use my utility knife along that inner crease to separate the piece off. Before I hang my drywall, I'm actually measuring where I'm gonna screw because I wanna make sure that I hit my blocking I added, and then also I'm measuring the box for the electrical outlet because of course you have to cut that out. I'm propping my drywall up off the ground with some scrap wood. 
on each side of where I want to cut and then I use my oscillating multi-tool again. This cuts through drywall like butter to get that perfect rectangle out of place for the electrical outlet. Now it's ready to hang and I got it shimmied into place. You want to ideally have your drywall slightly off the subfloor. So I got mine to a spot where I was happy with it and threw a couple screws just to hold it into place until I could get my little scaffolding set up and really get the whole thing screwed down, securing every 8 to 12-ish inches. Now, that is all I have for you on this video. Obviously, at this point, the rest is drywall work, but hopefully you learned a little something about how to frame up an exterior wall or close off an entrance you don't want anymore. Thank you so much for watching. Welcome to the woods. We'll catch you again next week.